Okay. Well, before then that and everything, thanks. Thanks a lot for being here. Um, well, we have a nice presentation from Mexico City. And Mexico, the country, we are Fedora Mexico, uh, a local community uh, from Mexico. And this is our presentation, Growing Together and how we re rebuild this uh, community. I'm Alex Callejas, and let me present my team. Alex Acosta, Hasim Anaya, and Ivan Chavero. So let's start with this. Okay. In Mexico, we have a lot of communities, a lot of developers' communities and open source communities, but all community is very, very special. We have a, a lot of technical people, very, very, very important in Mexico. And in the first years, uh, this don't happen. So let's share with you how, how we can do this thing. OK, uh, this is an old graphic, but it represents all the active members by country in, in Fedora. So uh, Mexico has uh, 45 active uh, federal contribu uh, contributors. But in our community, in this moment, we have uh, 1,068 members on Meetup and 516 members on the Telegram group. It's very, very huge. So in uh, the main groups, uh, we have uh, Mexican contributors like ambassadors, advocates, packagers, and okay, this time from story time, we have to share with you our journey and our learned lessons. All right. Uh, well, as you have my already guessed, I am the older guy in the group, probably in the conference, but well, at least in the group, I'm, I'm the oldest. And I'm also the, the ambassador. Yes. I'm not? Yes, <laughs> Thank you. Uh, well, and, and also my, my membership or my FAS account is pretty old. I joined Fedora in 2008. And uh, well, at that time, it was a very small group. We have uh, like eight registered ambassadors, but only three of us were, ac were actively contributing to the project. Uh, from those three or from those eight, I'm the only one who remains from that time. Uh, what the, they were interest, interesting times then because uh, all of the events were managed and driven by the Fedora Latam uh, community, uh, which was bright and uh, extended at that time. But that also represented some challenges like uh, difficulties in, in, in the logistic for budget and for shipping. I mean, uh, concentrating the swag in Latin America was a challenge to ship it to Mexico. I personally live 250 miles south of the North American border, and, and I, I, I was uh, getting a hard time, uh, having a hard time getting the, the, the swag from Latin America, right? Uh, uh, this is um, something that not necessarily uh, an issue right now, but in that time, uh, the Mexico Red Hat office was just a commercial and support office. And there the, the was nearly to zero involvement with the community. And uh, we also have mostly talks at university and colleges. That photo is from uh, Food Contempe. And you might recognize some of them. 
uh, some of the of, of the people who participated in, in that time, uh, Tatika, Nucho, uh, Neville. It's in the photo. Uh, good times. Uh, in 2014, one of our founder members go uh, on bus and, and ride to Managua, Nicaragua, to the food con, and that's where our story starts. But how we do it? How we do it to get this community well? Sorry. Okay, uh, for the next part, one of the main points to grow the community in Mexico was the communication across all the country, across all the people. And one of the main points is the Telegram group. Uh, it's an official federal channel, and we have more than 500, 516 today registered in the channel. Uh, one of the points that we grow with the channel is the moderation. We have a consul, we have uh, every, uh, everyone is on. Uh, Checking every, uh, all today, the code of conduct, the community, uh, providing help, providing support, providing advice. Everyone can join and uh, participate with the community. And uh, from this point, we manage all the all the meetups. We have a monthly meetup, one of the most active in Latin America. And uh, all the communication is born uh, there in the channel. Okay, uh, the next step that we have is uh, create a meetup group, uh, Fedora Mexico. Um, in this time of the, on the history, we have uh, support from Red Hat. They, they led uh, our meetings in and, and the office, so we can do uh, uh, very, very large meetings, and we find the best speakers and topics of uh, general interest, different, different people go to share um, all his knowledge. Uh, like I said, pre, we participate in community events, generate our own events, uh, like a release party on Federal Women's Day, and other community events like Open Source Contributor Summit, uh, COS, and Latin American Free Software Installation Festival, known as FLISOL. Uh, in this community event, we have a huge participation of the community, and we have a, a very, very nice event in the Red Hat Mexico office. Uh, the participation in the community events, we go to Guadalajara to talk about how the people can contribute to, to the Feroda project. Um, we do a workshop where uh, learn to the people how to contribute to the project since uh, translation and report books and packaging. And there's a, a, a lot of people there. It uh, was a, a nice, nice, nice event. In the Fedora Women's Day on uh, 2019, we have a, a huge participation from the university, the biggest university in Mexico. And we have participation internationally because uh, Tatika uh, participated with uh, remote with us, and this girl, uh, Susana, he, she's in, in, German, in Germany, so it was a, a very nice event too. Um, so, uh, we have participated in 12 out of 20 editions of the Southern California uh, Linux Expo, Expo, which is one of the, it is the largest uh, community run open source and free software uh, conference in, in North America. It's not, it's not a completely <laughs> Fedora Mexico credit for this, but we have participated and, and it is important 
because as you know, uh, there is a huge um, Spanish speaking population in that area actually. It is uh, the second one uh, next to Mexico City, it's, it is the second uh, speaking, uh, largest uh, Spanish speaking population in, in, in the whole, whole world. So um, this last edition, we, we earned the most memorable uh, boot. Uh, Fedora earned it. Yeah. <laughs> because, uh, and it is awarded to, to, to the, uh, voted by the, by the attendees uh, for the most, um, uh, uh, I don't want to use the wrong uh, term, but it was like a more memorable experience for them. So um, this is something that I, I would like to. It's because we're memorable. <laughs> this is something that I would like to brag about. And this is a photo that, that was um, in which uh, Ivan and myself uh, were interviewed for one of the uh, digital uh, 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 news news site. Uh -huh. uh, Kasim, Ivan, myself, Ruben, uh, if you recall him, he's, he's, he's living in the Netherlands, but he was an active um, uh, uh, ambassador. We have all participated in, in this conference as well. Okay, but not always we have a happy place. Of course, uh, we have a, a lot of issues because, you know, the people have different ideas, and the first issue that we found was the moderation. And we talk about all these uh, people like the Kirishiman. We are our friends. Yeah, we, we've had uh, uh, some trolling cases in the Telegram channel. Uh, there's uh, some, I don't know why uh, people that use Arch Linux or Arch Linux like to, uh, I don't know, give us a hard time. But uh, we try to, uh, well, I try to be uh, like count to three, uh, don't get mad, and ask the other guys to calm the waters, you know, because I, I'm, a, I'm a little explosive and I, I'm supposed to be a moderator. So I always say, okay, <clears throat> hey guys, there's someone here saying that uh, blah, 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 you know, stuff. And uh, we try, we try to focus on the technical, we try to focus on the social, we try to focus on being friends. And I think that the most important part is that we try to help each other. If you enter the, the, this Telegram channel and you're a newbie and you're asking like the, the most basic question, you're not, you're not gonna get the RTFM answer. Uh, either a seasoned expert is gonna answer you or uh, 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 also a newbie is going to answer you and there's going to start a conversation. There, there's times, I, I'm really happy about that because there's times that a, a, a new guy helps a new guy and they end up helping each other and uh, I, I just read it, I, you know, I, I didn't intervene in the, at that time. You just say, well, this is cool, they, they're, they're wrong, <laughs> but they are, they are finding the truth together and then uh, someone comes in and helps them or I help. Uh, but uh, we try to, to be very open uh, for, for the new guys. And, and uh, because most of the time they, they come really, really excited. And uh, uh, have, have you, I, I don't know if you, if you have been on, on uh, more, more um, technically hardcore oriented communities in which uh, you feel like you, 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 shouldn't ans you, you shouldn't ask stuff because they're gonna, they're gonna think you're dumb or, or, or stuff like that. We try, we try to create the environment for the newbies to, to ask them everything. And, and we are there to help also. Um, oh, the code of conduct. I, I, I don't even, I don't even, haven't read it, but uh, it's easy, just don't be an a-hole, right? It's uh, just like that. <laughs> And well, at what point, at some point, I don't know how or why, I was talking to my friend Renich, and he's, I'm a musician, and he's also a musician, 
And uh, we started saying, hey, let, we should, uh, he lives in, in some uh, area in uh, Jalisco state. I don't remember the, the place. Um, and we were talking about doing music in Linux. And we all know it's not like uh, the most pleasant exp of experiences, right? It's still an, an area of opportunity. Um, but uh, he, he was using a software, it's not free software, but uh, it runs on Linux, Mac, and, 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 uh, and Windows uh, called Bitwig. Uh, I think it comes from, from some guys that uh, got out of Ableton or something like that. Um, and uh, he said, hey, let, let's do a song. And, and uh, I don't remember if I or, or he, he agreed to, to, uh, to do the free software song in Spanish. Uh, so he, he, he is a guitar player and a keyboard player, so he, he wrote the melodies and, uh, and the guitars and, and, the, and, and the drum beats and he sent me everything and I recorded the, the, some vocals and I sent them to him and then he sent them back and so back and forth. Uh, it's not the, uh, it's, uh, I like to say that it's not the, the um, ideal, but uh, it's, a, it's a very nice community experience to make music remotely only using Linux. That's, that's the main point, and that, that, that wa that's why we, we chose the free software song, um, because uh, we, we were trying to prove that you can do music in Linux, and um, I, I shouldn't say it, but uh, it came out pretty well. Uh, uh, would you guys like to listen to it? Woo! Yeah? Yeah? <laughs> This, this effort uh, have a, a, a lot of all the community join to perform this video. Some guys do some things and this, this girl, Cassiopeia, uh, she do the, the musical video for this song in Blender. So, yeah, she's, she's the leader of the Blender community in Mexico. And, and uh, we sent them, we sent, we sent her the, um, the song, and she did, I don't know what, but it came out pretty well, and, and uh, an animation around the sound of, and, and the frequencies of the, of the song. And um, the thing, uh, and, and uh, just before you, you, you press yep. play, I wanna, I, wanna, I wanna be very, very emphatic about this. We were, we were asking which, in which community should we share this stuff? And like, I don't know, uh, at Unison, we all agreed, we should, we should share this in the, in the Fedora Telegram channel, because that's the place where, where, where we hang out, and we are sure that that's the place in which it, this is going to be welcomed. So that, that was a, like the premiere or something like that. <laughs> we did it on, on the Fedora Mexico uh, Telegram channel. So hit a DJ. If you guys want to sing. <laughs> you said. Now jump, no, just jump. Everything is in Spanish, so feel free to translate in your heads.
Let's have those pounds again. I was going to sing it, but uh, we couldn't afford to, the, for the band to travel here and perform. Yeah. <laughs> you just missed it, Bex. You just missed it. The, the, the performance. Yeah. You're next, sorry to miss it. No worry. Well, where we are and where we are going. In this moment, we have uh, improved packaging skills in our community. We have some people who want to, pay, so to, to get uh, as packagers. So we are performing a packaging workshop, but we found that the documentation is... Yeah, some, mem some members of... of uh, we, always, we are always trying to... to to, uh, uh, we're always asking our members to try to package or to enter the experience of being a packager on the Fedora ecosystem. Um, but we, we found some, some um, um, I, I like to call them areas of opportunity, not problems. Uh, uh, the, 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 the documentation for newbies in, in this area is a little confused and it, it changed, tends to change over time in English and uh, uh, might be our fault. Uh, it's not. Uh, we don't make it pair to pair with Spanish. So sometimes uh, your browser shows you. Uh, my browser shows me my the web page in Spanish, and the web page in English is different. Uh, more, more. It's a newer web page. So it might be uh, that we have to coordinate and, and help with these translations. Uh, but um, uh, it's uh, it, in in general, it's a little hard. Uh, for new packagers to learn the whole process, like uh, creating your fast account and then going and download the tools and learning the workflow, and because it's a weird workflow. <laughs> but it, it's nice, I like it, I, I am a packager. Uh, but uh, if you're used to uh, just sending the patch via email, you're gonna find like the, it's kind of bureaucratic, which is not. But uh, I, I'm, I'm saying a, a perspective of one of the guys that that, tr that is trying to become a packager, actually helping for, for LibreOffice. We, we're all, and let, me, let, me, let me just tell, tell this. Yeah, yeah. Uh, as part of the communities, we are also uh, um, uh, helping. It's not, this is not uh, only Fedora Mexico, but members of Fedora Mexico are helping uh, uh, on the development of, of LibreOffice, mostly for Mexican stuff, but uh, there's now some expertise around uh, writing the code for that huge uh, project and uh, we're also creating packages around the stuff we're, we're creating because they uh, uh, it takes time for patches to to get accepted so we create our, our own rpms and and uh, and uh, trying to we're finding stuff that we can contribute to fedora and and that's when one of my friends had a, a little problem um, with the onboarding uh, to be a, a packager and, just, he was, she was saying, hey man, I'm, I'm just a five-line patch. Why do I have to do all this? Oh, you know why? I told them. You know why? Because you're going to contribute more, and if you know the workflow, it's going to be easy, like water for you. Well, at least for me, it's easy. Uh, I, 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 I confess that I have to open the manual, but uh, still, it's, it's easy. Yep. So then we have implemented adoption of package program you know, maintaining the package between members of the community, looking for a high impact package as mentioned by, by Ivan. And other uh, challenges we have is supporting the growth of Fedora Latam. For us, it's very, very important collaboration across borders because Fedora Latam was our inspiration to create the Fedora Mexico group. So now we want to get back the favor and help now that we, 
or brothers need no, need us. So we are part of this great family of Latin America countries, and we need uh, support and to consolidation of Federal Latam with technical support in Federal Spanish channels and maybe sharing knowledge in remote and face-to-face -face talks. And that's it. That's it. That we that we do it and that we want to do it. So I don't know if you have some questions or comments. No questions. Sí. Oh, in Spanish or English? Um, so given the power, I don't know if you've played with chat GPT, it's actually quite good in translating from one language to another. And I'm wondering if more and more um, companies should use it, leverage it for translating documentation into Spanish, yeah. Chinese, etc. It's actually quite good. I was surprised how good it is in Spanish and Italian and Irish. Um, and it does a really good job. Great, thank Thanks. you. Thanks. Yeah, yeah, we have a, a small discussion one day in, in, in the Telegram group because someone <laughs> someone asked to chat GPT how we can install some uh, package tool on Arch Linux, and the process is correct, but that package don't exist, so we don't have a lot of confidence with chat GPT. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can take the output and play yeah, yeah. it. We know, but we don't trust it, a lot. It, is, it needs validation, but yeah. it, is, it is a good idea. 80-20, right? Yeah, because most companies, their complaint is, and the world revolves around English, and there's this uh, assumption that you have to speak English to work in IT and to use products, yeah. which is really bad. Most of the planet does not speak English. Yeah. And we should have documentation in, in all languages. Yeah, in, in our talks, we always talk with the young people. Don't worry about the English. You know English. Your operating system is in English. You all, all that you are practice if you have a Linux machine. So. And there's, there's something, uh, but uh, in, in Mexico, for example, we have, uh, we, we just don't speak Spanish. We speak uh, a lot of languages, a lot of native languages. And uh, uh, everything in computers is either in English or in Spanish. And there's, there's a barrier for, for native communities uh, to, to use technology because it's not being uh, shown in their language, or, or at least their mother tongue. Mm. They have to like in head, in head translate or stuff like that. The guys at, at Mozilla, they are doing translations of the browser to Nahuatl, and, and that's, that's pretty cool. And, and for a, when you said that, I just remember for a while, I, I have been trying to ask those guys to join the Fedora community and start uh, uh, at least checking out if how hard it is to translate the operating system and documentation to, to native languages. Another question, another comment? What do we need to win? That? Oh, we have a... Ah, uh, if you want this, you need to ask. Hey, you just <laughs> came for that. Yeah. <laughs> you need to sing the, the free software song. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, you yeah. should have I'll I'll ask one. So, on the earlier slide, you talked around some of your future steps in trying to build a stronger LATAM community yeah. for across across borders. My question is, from the Fedora project side, are there resources, infrastructure, tools that would help you do these things that? Fedora could provide. I was wondering, like, how could we help you yeah, keep doing well, awesome things? Uh, we love the idea, for example, the Spanish channel in Matrix. This was a first step. Maybe have a, a, a bridge between the Telegram channel because it's very, very, very interesting, the, the talk all day. 
uh, technical uh, technical talk all, all day in this channel and maybe if you see in metrics you can all the world can see what we are doing so yeah uh, i i believe we believe that the this first step to provide us a spanish channel was will be yeah. will be very very good for for start and then with Luis and Jose, we can coordinate to do some remote uh, talks, or maybe they can uh, go to Mexico, or some of our people go to Panama or other countries. And I, I don't know, we, we need to reestablish that friendship that all we have all this time. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we were discussing with Luis previously that we also, or first of all, we need to identify uh, the communities and the individuals that are uh, active and, and contributing and are uh, willing to reactivate uh, what in the past, it was a huge uh, community uh, all over LATAM. It is not uh, yeah. the case in this, these times, but uh, yeah, I, I think as... We, as we need uh, to resolve uh, all the issues, but we can do that, right? Yeah, step by step, step, by step one by day, yeah. There's, there's something, beer money, please. <laughs> <laughs> of course, and if we could we have an, a food con in Cancun or something like that, <laughs> we, why not? Yeah. Yeah. Maybe, maybe celebrate these events in Mexico yeah. or in uh, some place. Well, in Mexico. Yeah. Or, not Panama. <laughs> yeah. Maybe the next block of I don't know. Who knows? Yeah, we we can pull it off. We are working on that. An another question or comment? I'm going to do double duty of asking a question and operating the camera. Um, so uh, my question for you is, um, do you see any other open source communities that are very active in Latin America that yeah. you see as inspiration? Yeah, we, uh, we, we see a lot of uh, communities in Mexico. Uh, Python communities, uh, sysadmin communities, uh, Blender. Blender community. Uh, Rust community, they have a lot of, 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 of events and we don't go with them. Our first step is try to get uh, this communication and participate in, in, their, in their events and everything, but yeah, in Mexico are a, a lot of communities working and they, they inspire us to go. Mm -hmm. There are also companies that are uh, increasingly looking this interaction for with communities like the one that that organized the, the event that that uh, Alex showed that uh, uh, open source con contribution uh, commit that 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 is a uh, that was organized this that one was organized by a by a company uh, but looking to integrate and uh, and to activate the the, the communities uh, this event is growing and taking uh, it, it's a every very year. very huge event maybe 100 you know 500 people yeah kind yeah of, uh, a lot of people in mexico and for yeah. everything uh, google uh, genome uh, python perl everything you want is there but fedora no that's why we want to participate in in all kinds of events in everything yeah, I also have given talks to the GoLang community and with the Ross community, and I always do the like, <laughs> hey, come come join the Fedora yeah, community. Yeah, yeah. Um, I know from my perspective, I work for a university and um, doing open science and open scholarship work, and much of the world actually looks towards Latin American uh, universities and institutions as like leaders in open science because there's been so many really successful and like well-built initiatives throughout Latin America. So I know it's like 
not, you know, Fedora and open science, there's some projects, but I thought it was a cool connection looking at the work. Yeah, a lot of people in the universities use, uh, use some distribution in Linux. And when we go there and say, you know who creates a genome? Was created in Mexico. Of course. Of course. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Uh, obviously. <laughs> For example, uh, yeah, Federico yeah. Mena and Miguel, Miguel and Miguel de Casa. Yeah, yeah, and, and and also uh, not not only universities but research centers, they they try to use, uh, and I don't know why, eh, but uh, uh, might be CERN uses CentOS, I think. And my, they, it might be influencing other. There's, for, uh, for example, in Chihuahua, a uh, very prestigious research center, and those guys use Fedora. And and uh, and I, I, uh, from time to time, I bump into into the, the, the those PhD guys uh, in in the bar, and they start giving me hard times of, hey, this package, hey, 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 I'll help, I'll help, I will help, <laughs> be like that. But they, they, they are enthusiasts, and, and, uh, but they're doing science, hard science with, with Fedora. Yeah, even the, the government have a lot of projects with uh, open source and Linux, yeah. Any other questions or comments? Yeah, not really a question, but yeah, I Thanks for your presentation. It was amazing. Like you're doing some really cool stuff, and I love the energy. I think like <laughs> you can see all the passion and energy you're putting into that. And we'll talk after. I would really be happy to help to have like maybe Fedora CoreOS workshop or like uh, virtual events and have someone from the team come and talk about or do a workshop or stuff like that. I think that, Great. that would be really cool. For sure. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? No. Thank you. Anything for attending? Well, gracias, amigos. All right. <laughs> <Nada>. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, we have uh, some some stickers from Mexico, and we have uh, two coffee mugs. Two coffee mugs with a nice logo to Marin do it for us. So. Maybe the first person who, uh, he, I, who comments. <laughs> Does that do? So, boy, we are contacted, yeah. <laughs> oh, very nice. <laughs> we, <laughs> uh, we, have a, we have another one. We have another one. Uh, now you will have to fight each other. Yeah. The winner gets a, gets a mark. Yeah. Stop it with the sticker. Ah. <laughs>